We all know the LS motor responds well to performance modifications, like cylinder heads, camshafts, and of course, boost. The question is, how well does the new LT motor respond? You know, to things like headers, air intake, and of course, nitrous. In this video, we'll cover the dyno testing of a 5.3 liter L83 direct injection variable cam truck motor. We'll show you how this new motor compares to the previous generation 5.3. We'll also show you how it compares to the previous generation 6.0. Then we'll show you how well it responds to the normal kind of performance modifications and finish up strong with a healthy dose of nitrous. Unlike most of our testing, we relied on a factory management system to run this L83 5.3 liter. Now, normally we run with the Holly HP or a fast XFI system, but on this one we ran the factory ECU using a harness and, and computer and air intake and all that stuff from Gander Chevrolet. Now, this setup was originally designed to run the larger LT1 motor, but thanks to Eric at Westec, we were able to get this system up and running on our 5.3 liter, and with a little tuning, it worked out just fine. Now, we had to change a few things on the harness, just because sensors are in different spots on the 5.3 than they are on the LT1, but all that worked out. What I really like though, is Eric was able to get the system running as a speed density system. That way, we didn't have to rely on the mass air meter. Not that it was much of a restriction because we actually tested that, but what I really liked is we were able to see the throttle body without the air intake system on there. And we were able to physically verify that the throttle was going to wide open throttle when we were telling it to go to wide open throttle. Because of the torque management systems in the factory ECU, sometimes you ask for wide open throttle and it tells you you don't really want wide open throttle. You want more like 70 or 80% throttle. But this way, when we, when we said we want wide open throttle, we know we actually got wide open throttle and we were able to see the nitrous going into the motor, which was super awesome. So let's take a look at the factory setup and show you what this L83 actually did in stock trim. We'll also try some headers and removing the air intake and then we'll get right to the nitrous. This is the power output of our 5.3 liter L83 direct injection variable cam timing, <laughs> the new modern motor. And uh, it's hard to see from obviously one graph how impressive this really is. This is uh, these are some pretty big numbers from a 5.3 liter. The best way to take a look at that is to compare it to the previous generation 5.3 liter. That'd be, this is a factory LM7. So this is not the highest horsepower version, but it kind of gives you an idea. And so <laughs> you see it's not even close. I mean, you're talking about 50 or 60 horsepower difference. And not only that, which we, we could expect that. I mean, if it had better cam timing, even variable cam timing, it could pick up power. Um, but look at the gains everywhere. I mean, this this is an awful lot like a bigger motor, and we'll take a look at a bigger motor. We'll compare this to a bigger motor in just a second. But you compare these two 5.3 liters, it's just not even close. I mean, the extra compression, variable cam, the direct injection obviously helps. So this is basically, like I said before, it's the next evolution of the 5.3 liter LS. The LT stuff works very well. It's got good power. But here, let's take a look. Uh, this is a 5.3 liter against a 5.3 liter. Let's take a look at this 5.3 liter L83 direct injected motor against a 6 liter. Now this is a factory LQ4 rebuilt with headers, just the same kind of way. As a matter of fact, this L83 right now doesn't even have headers on it, it had stock exhaust manifolds. But this is a, this is a 6 liter, so the 6 liter is maybe just a touch better uh, in, in certain places, you know. but it shows you how far the 5.3 liter L83 has come. It's an impressive piece. I mean, it has almost the same power basically as an LQ4 6 liter, which is, you know, everybody wanted that in a truck compared to a 5.3 liter because it had more torque and everything. And now this new 5.3 has all that stuff. So it's an impressive piece. Now let's take a look and see what it does after we uh, try a few modifications to it. Now that we've compared it to the previous LM7 and LQ4, Let's take a look at the, some performance modifications that we tried on the L83. 
First off, this is we ran in this configuration it was run with the factory ECU and all we did was tune it to make sure that the air fuel was right and the timing is right. We tried some various uh, variable cam sweeps and stuff and, and did all that. And this is what this had the factory exhaust manifolds breathing through uh, two and a half inch exhaust extensions basically. So kind of a free flowing uh, exhaust with stock manifolds. First thing that we did was try and we did some modifications to the air box. You can see here we basically kind of disassembled the air box and um, took the bottom off, just kind of made it a, an open deal to see how much the air box was restricting the power. And you can see uh, we didn't change very much. You know, we went from 398 horsepower and 427 foot pounds of torque up to. 402 horsepower and 429 foot-pounds of torque. So n not huge gains from the air intake, um, at least from that change on the air intake. So the next thing we tried were long tube headers. Unfortunately for us, the long tube headers would not fit on the on our dyno, so we had to actually aim them forward and route the exhaust around. It wasn't a big deal, but uh, we just had to reconfigure them. So here are the headers, and the headers really only gained power down low, I mean, we saw some changes. We tried some, uh, tried changing the variable cam, and with no luck really. And so, let me know if you guys, let me know in the comments out there if you guys have installed long tube headers on any of your trucks or anything, and the guys were able to tune it. If he got some good gains, I'd like to see those. I'd like to find out because we didn't really see much, and we normally do when we run headers on any kind of LS combination. So we picked up seven or eight foot pounds down low here with the headers. Um, they didn't do very well at the top. So again, we don't normally see this with long tube headers. The factory exhaust manifolds actually work fairly well, but let me know what you guys think. The last thing we did on this was to, uh, we just basically made a radius air entry in front of the throttle body because we were kind of preparing for the nitrous stuff, which we'll show you in a minute. We made a radius air entry on the uh, inlet of the throttle body. And that did end up picking up some power, especially at the top. Uh, so we got some fairly decent gains all the way out here at 6,500, but nothing really huge. I mean, at 6,500, it went from 369 to 382. So it picked up a little bit there, but through the rest of it, you know, not a lot. Um, it shows that the factory stuff at the factory power level was working fairly well, and this thing made over 400 horsepower and 425 foot pounds of torque. So it was making good power. Now let's find out. We have something that we know is going to make power. So let's take a look at what happened when we added the nitrous. Okay, the final test today was to compare our mildly modified now with headers and the radius air intake on the 5.3, Milo's wrestling in the background, to, uh, we added nitrous to it. So we added a Nitrous Express single fogger nozzle with that injects, combines both the fuel and the nitrous into one nozzle. We positioned it in front of the throttle body and this is where I was telling you I like to be able to see that the throttle was definitely wide open and we could see the nitrous going in. You can take a look at the video, it's pretty cool. So here's our NA motor. You know, we're 405 horsepower and 432 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we introduced the Nitrous Express Nitrous Kit with 100 horsepower jetting. Hey, look, we picked up 100 horsepower. That's exactly what Nitrous is supposed to do. So we were right up near 500 horsepower. Yeah, 498. And you can see it just picks up basically the same amount of power all the way through, which is kind of what nitrous does if you have the fueling right. And we took away four degrees. What are you doing, Milo? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? Get them, get them. Arr, 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 arr. Attack, attack, attack. Come here, come here. Uh, uh, ready, attack. Tell them what you think about nitrous. Arr, arr, arr. Okay. So the nitrous worked out good. 100 horsepower, you add 100 horsepower with 100 horsepower jetting, that's what happens even on the L83 and it responded very well to the nitrous as we would expect that it would. We took away three or four degrees I think on this just to be safe because we only had the factory plugs we didn't even put colder plugs in it. So 
Yeah, we did change the gap on it just a little bit, but still, uh, that's a pretty hot plug to be running nitrous on, and I don't recommend it. So definitely change to a colder plug. This setup worked good, but the interesting thing is headers didn't show a lot, and the air intake didn't show a lot, so where are we going to get the gains from? It's got to be camshaft, right? So next we want to take a look up camshaft and cylinder heads after running the nitrous. Then, obviously, we've got to add boost. That's coming up. Now, obviously, I'm a big fan of the LS engine family. I'm a fan of a lot of engine families, but I like the LS stuff. I like 5-liter Fords and rotaries and V10s. I mean, I really like everything. But I'm a big fan now of this new direct injection L83 5.3 liter. I mean, take a look at the comparison between that motor and the previous 5.3 liter. Heck, between that and a 6 liter. This thing not only makes a bunch of power, but it makes a bunch of torque. And the variable cam time in the direct injection helps do all that. So it's the next evolutionary step above an LS motor, which is really cool. The one thing that I'm struggling with, I'm having trouble with, is fueling for these things. Now, not that it's insurmountable, it's just more difficult. Because we have such high like um, injection pressure, we have to change um, you know, things like injectors and pumps and the cam lobe on the cam to drive the pump. And so we're just changing different things than we're used to. Before, if we wanted more fuel, we wanted to make a thousand horsepower, we just put bigger injectors in it and maybe a bigger fuel pump and we can do that and, and head on down the line. But the thing that people will have trouble with on these LT motors is those things become more and more expensive. You're not just gonna go get another set of DECA 80 pound injectors and, and call it good. The injectors for a direct injection deal are much more costly and, and maybe that stuff will come down later on. But I like this L83. It makes a ton of average power, which is very impressive. I think it's gonna respond really well to supercharging and turbocharging. It responded well to the nitrous oxide. I can't wait to get some more cams in it. And I think that the intake manifold on this truck manifold, I mean on this truck motor, is already pretty good. But I have a, a, an MSD atomic for it. We can also try the LT1 stuff. This is exciting. I can't wait to do, do more on these uh, new LT motors. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all this stuff, and I'll keep testing.